Hello, traders, and welcome to TradingWithBill.com. I'm Bill. We're in Pattaya, Thailand. We got sunny blue skies out there today. I don't think we're going to have any rain today. It's absolutely gorgeous out there. It's currently 6.32 today on a Wednesday, and uh, that would be um, 19.32 on a Tuesday night on Wall Street. Today's uh, just glancing down, as I always do, with that dollar index, 93.73. That's okay. It's hovering, hovering there. It really hasn't done a lot in the last 24 hours since I spoke to you last. So it's it's doing its thing. It's uh, it's hanging out. <laughs> but the dollar pair, as you can see, the only one that really made a move yesterday was the pound. And i um, not quite sure what that was all about. Um, so anyhow, um, I was sort of kind of maybe in and out of the markets yesterday. I uh, had some technical issues, not on my side, on, on somebody else's side, and uh, trying to work that out. So I was on a Skype conference call for like three hours. <laughs> eh, hey, what happens? Hey, let's take a look. What's going on? New Zealand. New, New Zealand, huh? Trade balance, not a good number coming out this morning. Well, we have uh, the German five-year bobble auction. Is that how you say that? Um... France uh, job seekers total. Okay. New home sales out of the U.S. Crude oil inventories as we get most Wednesdays. Crushing crude oil inventories. And that looks like about it. So I was early this morning reading the uh, Bangkok Post financial section. And uh, then I went to uh, Market Watch. And what did I see? I think they're going to raise interest rates in the U.S. again. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Looks like they're going to up these interest rates again, another 25 basis points. That's what it looks like. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's about it on that side. And I forgot yesterday, and I apologize. I forgot to talk about what happened in the, in the, in the States. I absolutely forgot to put this up here yesterday. This is uh, the Think or Swim platform from TD Ameritrade. And uh, let's take a look. Uh, oil. Really nice move to the upside. Actually, uh, it looks just like it just about spiked that 73 level. And uh, the last two days, you've had down days, right? So with that 73 level, you would think, well, it's a good chance it's going to come back down. But this looks like it's it's like doing the stair step thing to the upside, right? So we've talked about this going to $80 a barrel. Now, I'm six months late. I thought it was going to be at $80 a barrel in June, right? July, you know, I thought it was going to be at $80 a barrel all the way back six months ago. However, if you take a look at this chart, it comes up, comes back down, comes back up. This candle really doesn't affect anything. No high or low, no low or high. It's just there, right? It comes up. Now it looks like it's going to stair step back down and then come back up, right? The old A, B, C, D pattern, right? A, B, C. And this might come down to the D leg and then pop back up again. So we'll see how it, see how it goes. But very interesting on all. You know, I think this was a selling opportunity at 73. It's now at 71.92. Um, remember, if you're trading these oil futures, every dollar, if it moves one dollar, that's a thousand dollars, right? Every penny is ten dollars. So, yeah, this is uh, it's a good good thing to trade. I always say this, but unfortunately, I don't trade into New York session very long, just because it's 10, 11 o'clock at night for me. So, but man, if you trade in New York. This is really nice. Um, the dollar index, what do we add at the dollar index? 94.14 on this chart. I don't know why there's such a difference between investing and think of swims. Yeah, this is like really a big difference um, on that. Gold sideways, absolutely nothing going on gold. Uh, VIX hanging out at 12.42, be about between 12 and 13 on the VIX. The ES has had three down days and looks like it's looking for another down day today. And the oil futures is sideways. Not a lot going on with the with the euro. You can see it's just hovering out there at that 200 exponential moving average. And we talked about this 200 exponential moving average and how how it's going to hold, right? Yeah, well, we're in, uh, I don't know, one, two, three, four, and we've got a new candle now. You know, almost five days, and it hasn't been able to break below that 200 exponential moving average. So that's what's going on on futures and all that good stuff. And if I get this to work, I'd be really happy. Come on. 
Oh, my goodness. Come on, Jackson. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. All right. So that's what's going on there. Let's do it. Let's get to it. And uh, let's get some charts over here. I am working, and I haven't figured it out yet. You know, I, I shoot straight. I shoot straight. I haven't figured out how to get these numbers bigger. These side numbers here, they need to be bigger, but they're not. So. Let's go through uh, some pairs today. Let's take a look at, as we do, as we do, as we do. Um, take a look at the Shiro here. So they've got a new candle came out. It's right below this uh, 55 exponential moving average, heading down to 200. You know, this is at uh, 1760, you know, 1765, somewhere in that area. You know, take it to the downside. I, I don't I don't see any problem with that. Take it below that 55 uh, teal line, just take it to the downside. I think that's okay. I think that's a that's an all right trade. I don't want to buy this here, right? You got the you got the five, the twenty, and the fifty-five above price. I really don't want to buy this. This would have to really, you know, I'd like to see this come back up to that um, uh, seventeen ninety area. 1800 right back up here right back up there and then you know possibly take it to the downside again right so you know if we can come up to this 1800 level which is probably right about there and then and then we can sync that to the downside that just looks like that looks like the better trade for me however current price where we're at right now I'm all about this. I don't have a problem with selling this here at this 1760 area. You know, the you know, the problem is you only got like 24 pips, 26 pips, and you're going to come into this 200. And you see, every time it's hit this 200, it's reacting. So, you know, but, and the thing is now, like I'm doing this video now, by the time it gets up into YouTube and I get it out there, this thing's probably going to move another two or three candles, right? It's going to be an hour before this gets out there. So we might be late for this. We might have to wait. Um, for a pullback or a bounce off to 200. If we get a bounce off to 200, I'm all about taking it to the upside, right? If it gets down to this 200 exponential moving average, right? I'm all about let's let's take this uh, little bad boy to the upside, right? Boom, take it to the upside. I think that's a good thing. Uh, what else we want to take a look at while we're here? We'll take a look at the euro pound. Here's our stuff from last week on the euro pound. Look at this. Came all the way up to the top of that. Fit. Remember we put this box in here. Um, all the way up here, right? It's come all the way down. Now it's below um, the 200 because the pound is strong. We can get rid of that. Let's get rid of that bad boy. There we go. Um, now we've we've actually broken below this 50 exponential, 50% um, fib, and now we're coming up to the uh, 382 fib, which is at where it's at now. Is it going to bounce? What's it going to do? I think this is void. To tell you the truth. Yeah, I think uh, we're going to get rid of that. There we go. Uh, what do you, you know, well, the pound is strong, right? The pound has been strong the last 24 hours. So, you know, I'm not, I'm, this is a sell trade. Again, look at the angle and separation of these EMAs, right? The 200 is not in line with it, but the other EMAs all points to the downside. They got separation between them. You want to look at that. That tells me this is a bearish trade. Where do I want to trade this? I want to trade this when this comes, gives me a retest. Or to put a trend line in there, and it's really not a significant trend line, but, you know, if we can, you know, get something like here, right, maybe we could take this to the downside, right? That, that seems logical to me, and that looks like that's going to happen, right? That looks like that's going to happen. All right, let's get out of the euro here. Go and take a peek at somebody else. Here's the pound, you know, we talked about... I've been talking about this pound, you know, it's just, this was a really nice move yesterday. Just plowed through all these EMAs, right? Went through the, the 55, went through the 200, just boom. This looks like a data can't, something came out here, and then just continued, right? Kept riding. We call it riding that five. That's that little brown line. It's hard to see, I know. But we call it riding the five, and it just rode the five. Now it's sideways because of slow time. After New York closed, Asia opened, that slow area, and it's just sideways now. What's it going to do next? I have no idea, folks. <laughs> I don't really don't want to sell this here, right? I don't want to sell this. And I want to sell the pound, but I don't know if I want to sell this here. This is a fight, right? This is a fight. So probably the thing to do is just grab an old fib here, and we're going to just fib this swing here, right? Boom. Let's fib this swing right there. 
and this is a 618 where it's at right now. So I don't want this to come back up to the 786, right? If you can get it, right? If you, if, if, you know, everything being great, we'd love for this to come back up to the 786 area. Pop it right there. Maybe we can sell it from there. Um, not, you know, really, this should be heading down here at this 50. Look at all this Forex junk here, left of the chart. All this Forex junk, right? Yeah. I want to sell the pound. I don't want to buy it. I don't want to buy it from here, right? doesn't look really healthy to do that. All right. Uh, so Simon's going on. Here's an Aussie. Now, I, I, I really like this trade on this Aussie dollar. This Aussie dollar looks really, really nice. Wow. Can you hear that siren? Oh, my goodness. Good morning. I love living in the city, man. It's just great living in the city. Yeah, so what we're, what we're going to do here is, you, you know, put this little trend line in here. Hopefully it'll pop below it. What's the biggest thing I see on this chart? Anybody figure it out? What is the biggest thing I see on this chart? I like this. I like this nice, like, C move here, right? Comes up, turns around, gently comes back down. But I like this. Look at this. This is a wide open space right here. Wide open. Wide open for us to make some pips, right? We need a good bearish candlestick formation down below that maybe 72.40, 72.50 area. And we're going we're gonna to just take this to the downside, right? I am really looking to get in this today. This is on my big list today. Get this and take this Aussie dollar to the downside. If you can get this to break out, right? All right, let's... Uh, New Zealand's not doing much. Um, yeah. Hmm. What's a euro yen up to? Let's take a look at some. Uh, oh, do I get this every day? <laughs> every day I get this uh, where it doesn't want to. Uh, come on, come on, come on. There we go. All right. B sixty. Give it to me. Give me some candles. Got to have candles, right? All right. So, like, do you want to trade that? Uh, you know, some areas of interest, though. Areas of interest. Right? This, to me, is an area of interest. Right? I'd be very interested in that area. What's it going to do here? Hey, look at this. One, two, three, right? Four breakthrough touches of this area, and, and it can't break below it. Now, if you're going to take it to the downside, you got to fight all this, you know, these support levels in here, right? you got to fight all this stuff. But, you know, that apparently is significant resistance with all these touches and can't can't get below it on this Euro and a Zero. And Euro Aussie, which is, again, one of my favorite pairs. Look at this bad boy, right? This thing di didn't give us a pullback on a fib we put in there last week. I think it was last week, right? Come on. Help me out. Help me out. Yeah, so this to me looks like um, nothing. <laughs> yeah, nothing. What are we going to do here? Nothing. I don't want to be fighting into this. You know, you got to fight all this. We want this to pull all the way back, right? We want to get up here at this... Um, Oh, well, you got 6,300 up here, right? Let's just mark that off, though. Keep an eye on that. Yeah, right? 63, right there. Bing, right? Man, you'd love to see that pop up there, and then we could take it to the downside. Is that going to happen today? Probably not. But, you know, it's just something we want to look at and keep an eye on as we, you know, as we do our thing, right? There we go. Yeah, let's take a look there. The other, the other um, option is to sell if it goes below this 200, right? If it gets below this 200 exponential moving average, 61.80, man, we're all in it, right? We're all in it. We'll just take it to the downside at that 61.80 error on this Euro Aussie. I like this pair, though. This pair moves nicely. Uh, not lately, though. <laughs> Look at that sideways price action, right? All right. Boop. 
Trey, it's great to be with you on this Wednesday. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning in Asia, of course, on Thursday. Traders, have a great trading day. Always remember, trade smart, not hard. And what? Have a little bit of fun. Traders, we'll catch you tomorrow in the morning. See you now. Have a great one. Bye-bye, my friends.